Conquering Manhood, Session 006. Conquering Manhood. Command your legacy. Take action and conquer all. Welcome to the Conquering Manhood Podcast, where we talk to today's conquerors, men and women who will mentor or inspire us to conquer all. Your journey is defined by you, but each week I bring you a unique featured conqueror who has an inspiring story or a life hack that we can try and emulate. Consider this show as your personal mastermind. This week's session is brought to you by Huckberry.com my favorite manly membership website where you get to learn about all the manliest gear but also get a great deal too. Check them out by going through my direct link so they know you're coming from the Conqueror Nation. Go to conquerormanhood.com slash Huckberry. That's H-U-C-K-B-E-R-R-Y. Make sure to stay with us to the end of this session for the special Big A giveaway brought to you by Conqueror Manhood and Huckberry. Conqueror Nation, I'm excited about today's conversation so let's get on with the show. Welcome back, Conqueror Nation, and thank you for joining us for Session 006. Today's feature, Conqueror, is the founder of one of the most rapidly growing digital magazine publications, Founder Magazine. Founder Magazine ranks with the heavy hitters like Entrepreneur, Fast Company. So I'm excited about today's session because our feature, Conqueror, is going to tell us how he built Founder. He goes and interviews amazing people like Sir Richard Branson, Tim Ferriss, Ariana Huffington, and so many others. But today, his story is just a classic example that anyone can start from zero and with no entrepreneur knowledge, no background, no connections, and work hard to make a successful life and the freedom to conquer all. Conquer Nation, I'm excited to bring to you Founders Magazine, Mr. Nathan Chan. Nathan, thanks for coming on, brother. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. and Thank you so much for the uh, kind intro. I was loving that explosion. That was awesome. <laughs> how'd how, you do that? That's how we do, baby. I use uh, this little uh, box jock thing here. Uh, yeah, so that, that's how I did it. <laughs> we could talk man, more. That's, that's cool. <laughs> All right. So, man, first off, congratulations on Funder Magazine because what that's what's really cool. You guys are crushing it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's it's been a lot of hard work, a lot of hustle, like you said. But, uh, you know, if you put your mind to something, you know, it's amazing what you can accomplish with, you know, a lot of hard work, patience, focus relentless hustle and just, you know, putting yourself out there, making yourself vulnerable, speaking to people, finding out how they're doing it, how you can do it too. And yeah, just, just keep building. Uh, it's I amazing like, what it can happen. I like it, Nathan. And, and I think you just gave us a little glimpse of what this session has in store. Uh, but here at Conquer Man, we love to start things off with a favorite success quote or a mantra, something that maybe you tell yourself, when things were tough and, and you use it to self-motivate. Do you have a quote like that? And then tell us how it changed your life. How do you use it to apply it? Yeah, I do have one quote. I don't uh, come back to it as much as I probably should anymore. But uh, this is a great one that really did actually help me turn things around. Like, you know, found as my first real business. Uh, when I started, I knew nothing about entrepreneurship. And I was working in a, in a job that I really didn't like. And I was doing work that didn't fulfill me. And this quote that always stuck out to me that that really hit home and I think is so powerful is if you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always gotten. And that reminds me of, was it Einstein? You know, if you keep doing the same thing you've always done, you're always going to get the same result. Yeah, pretty much. I love the simplicity of that of that quote there, but it's it's the truth, man. You want to not live a mediocre life, you got to start doing things that are not mediocre. Yeah, that's right. It's so simple, right? But it makes so much sense because, you know, if you were talking to me even four years ago or three years ago, before I started Founder, I started Founder towards the end of 2012. So it's coming close to three years. You know, if you had have asked me, you know, three or four years ago, 
uh, you know, what do you do every day? You know, I just do the same thing. And it's so easy to just get caught up in that grind, in that routine and, you know, living for the weekends. And I don't know, it is very difficult to make those changes, uh, especially because it's quite uncomfortable as well. And you really have to push yourself. Yeah, and that's and that that mundane lifestyle is what I call the the treadmill of life. And sometimes we just got to be courageous and vulnerable, like you mentioned, and just step off and go do what others aren't doing. You know? Yeah, that's right. And you know what's interesting as well is sometimes it's easy to forget what you're doing, and and I say that in the sense mm-hmm. that. It's easy to forget that like, you know, you're working a nine to five job or you're living an unfulfilled life, but you just keep doing it because it's like a routine. It's a, it's a habit and you just forget that you want to do other things. So you just keep moving and you just keep moving, you just keep moving and you can't really stop and you just, just forget about these other things that you want to do and you just get so caught up in it all. So it is very difficult to make a change. It is. And basically is people get comfortable and, uh, mm. Oh, 100%. And, and, you know, I think I've seen that on your Instagram feed, which we'll talk about later, but it was like, you know, success is on the other side of of comfort. So you got to go out there and get it, baby. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Like, uh, we're we're pretty big on the quotes on Instagram. All right, man. So uh, let's let's dive in a little bit into into you. So, uh, you know, Founder Magazine, what a brilliant idea. But wait a minute, it's already been done. And, And that's what I love about your story is that you didn't let that stop you. So uh, before we get into Founder Magazine, can we know a little bit about you on the personal note? I'm pretty into entrepreneurship and business and startups and stuff like that. So that consumes a lot of my life now. I think I think if you want to build an extremely successful business and you're passionate about your business, it kind of has to be an obsession. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. you know, that, that is a big part of my life. But, you know, I have an amazing girlfriend. I have an amazing family. And I have an amazing uh, network of friends, and uh, you know, not only just business-related friends, but personal friends too. I, I love to go out and have a good time. I'm the kind of person that, uh, you know, goes pretty hard at something. So, you know, if I go hard on the business, I go hard on the business. If you know, I, I you know, tools are down, and I had to take a break, I'll you know, go pretty hard with the partying and having fun and going out with my friends and stuff like that. I'm quite into. Um, I really like the spring carnival. So here in Melbourne, Australia, where I'm based, we the horse racing is really, really big, and uh, we're coming up to spring soon because uh, uh, we're just yeah, pretty much in winter still, but spring's starting to trickle out now. And uh, during the spring carnival season, which is probably from September to mid-November, uh, they have race days and... Uh, I really enjoy going to the races every weekend with all my friends, uh, mainly just the guys <laughs> and yeah. uh, having beers and just, um, you know, it's having a whole ton of fun. And uh, yeah, that's um, a little bit about me. I own a share in a racehorse. I like good food. I love to travel. Um, yeah, that's that's a little bit about me on the personal side. Does that does that uh, fill some gaps? Absolutely. Uh, let me ask you, here on the state side in, in, in America, at the horse track, the ladies always wear the big hats. What's the, what's the culture like over there? Is that the same thing? Yeah, exactly the same. Everyone <laughs> dresses up, and it's a whole ton of fun. Awesome. All right. So, found the magazine, man. Um, how did you do it? Can you walk us down that story? You know, it's just mind blowing when you think about it. Oh, well, well, thank you. I guess I just started. Like I know it. I know it. Like might, might uh, you know that might be a cop out answer, but to me, I think just starting was was the real hard part. And then the even harder part after that was creating something that people want, creating something that people find valuable, that they'll exchange their cold hard cash with. So yeah, I think that's that is first how I started. I, I just realized that, you know, the work that I was doing wasn't fulfilling me and I wanted to uh, work in marketing. And, um, I even tried to get a job in marketing, couldn't get a job. And then, you know, I, I read, uh, I had always read business books, um, you know, in the past three to four years. And, you know, the book that changed the game for me was, um, Tim Ferriss's four hour work week. And I kind of always had an inkling to start something, but I didn't know where to start. And then an opportunity came around where 
I could purchase this course that taught you how to make a digital magazine. And, you know, it's funny that because probably when people see the work that we've done at Founder, they would have thought like, oh, yeah, Nathan just thought up this idea one day or they wouldn't even know that there's me behind it, you know, and they'd say, okay, this guy just thought up an idea. This is Founder. It's a business magazine. Um, it's cool. It's funky. It's fresh. It's for young young entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, novice stage, early stage startup founders. And, you know, he just went out and did it. But it, it wasn't that easy in that sense that I just came up with the idea. Like, you know, one day I just decided I was going to do it. I came up with the idea and this is what it was going to be about. And this is how I was going to create the magazine. I actually had my hand held throughout the whole process, to be honest with you, oh, wow. Jose. Like I purchased a course. It cost me at the time. It's the software. Like it's it's off the shelf publishing software. So it allows you to create the magazine. So it's like off the shelf. We, we didn't get a developer, an app developer or anything like that. Um, we paid for a license pretty much. And uh, the license is a little bit more now. But uh, when I paid for it, it was two grand. And I remember I didn't have that much money at the time. And I just put it on my credit card because I thought it was a brilliant idea. And I just thought it was a great opportunity. I didn't when I even I even when I purchased the license to make a magazine, I, I didn't even know straight away what it was going to be about, to be honest. Um, it was something that evolved over time. Funnily enough, the first idea that I had, it was going to be on horse racing. And I was <laughs> going to do it with my friend. And uh, he then he got a job because he was freelancing as a one of my best mates. He uh, is a freelance uh, journalist for uh, the horse racing industry. Yeah, he got a job, and uh, then he didn't want to do it anymore. And then I was like, yeah, well, I'm not gonna do it by myself because so, it's funny. Like I've always done things with uh, someone else. Like I've always travelled with someone else. I've always even like when I go out somewhere or whatever, I always like to go with someone else, and and I always like company. Got to get so your butter, funny. buddy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And it's funny that uh, when I started Found, I did it by myself because it's kind of unlike me to do that. Yeah, so I purchased this course and then I, you know, had a long, hard think about the things that I'm passionate about, the things that interest me and where I can provide value. And I kind of just thought, you know what, I can see something here with Founder. I know podcasts are hot. I know that you know, interviews are hot. I know that uh, I want to learn about this entrepreneurship stuff. Well, why not just create a magazine that I'd, I would like to read? And then, you know, I, I'd read other business magazines and found them difficult to relate to. And then, yeah, I just, you know, started on that first issue, man. That first issue to put together took like at least four months, you know, finding different designers and all sorts of things like that. And and even just going through the whole process with uh, the off-the-shelf publishing software, uh, it's called MagCast. It was not easy. And I remember I was getting so frustrated that uh, I almost gave up, you know. I almost gave up and didn't publish and, and just thought, you know what, this thing's a waste of time because uh, it was getting so difficult. And I wasn't really working that hard on it. Yeah, then I just launched. And when I launched uh, the magazine, um, you know, we didn't even have a successful person on the front cover. It was a stock photo, stock image. And I had a few articles and that I found valuable and, and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, I remember the first day we, we launched, we made $5. That's what really changed the game for me, man. Like The first $5. Yeah, that first $5, dude. Like, you know... This hustle that I have, this hunger, this relentless work ethic, just, you know, these big goals, dreams and ambitions. I wasn't born with that fire inside of me. It started around the time and has progressed and, and built up over time. But it first started when I launched. Well, I think a, a few takeaways that I want to highlight to the Conquer Nation that uh, came about from your story was... A, you invested in yourself. So you went out there and you bought this program for $2,000, not even knowing what you're going to do with it yet, probably going into the horse track arena, but, <laughs> you know, so happy that you were a founder. And, uh, and also that you kind of intersected what you were obsessed with on the side and your passion, and you allowed that to kind of guide you onto what you mm. were going to do, right? So yeah, I, that's right. I, I think that's I think that's pretty awesome, and and I just want to highlight that for the Conquer Nation because a lot of times people just don't know what to do, or 
you know, they're afraid. They're not, I'm not. I'm not good at anything. But here you are, a featured conqueror, because you made something out of nowhere. Mm. Well, thank you. And I think that's a really good point you make because a question that's often asked by aspiring entrepreneurs is, "I want to start a business. You know, I want to do this stuff, but I don't know where to start." And you know what I say? I often recommend to keep your day job. You know, don't leave your day job. And that's exactly what I did. I just started Founder on the side. I treated it as a passion project. And even when I launched the first day, I was like, I said to myself, I'm going to give myself a good year of giving it a good crack, like working really hard at it, you know, every night after work when I could and in the mornings before I work, before work when I could and just see what happens after 12 months. I didn't even put this big emphasis on myself that, you know, the dreams that I have now around, you know, building a multi-million dollar empire and, you know, impacting tens of millions of entrepreneurs. Like it wasn't like that. I just thought of it as a side hustle, just as a project. And another takeaway is if you want to start, but you don't know where to start and you're struggling to get started, sometimes all you need is just to back yourself in the sense that like what I did, I dropped two grand on my credit card. I didn't really, couldn't really afford it at the time, but I wasn't going to waste that money. So I made myself financially accountable mm. and I put through, through the hat, through my hat over the fence before I jumped it. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a big one. You know, a lot of times you hear people say that you get an accountability partner or you just state your goals to others. So you don't want to let them down. But when you put money on the table, <laughs> You know, it's hard to let go of two grand when you ain't got nothing. Yeah, that's right. Um, there's a really cool website called, you, uh, you might have to blurt this out, but it's called gofdoit.com. Okay. And, and what that allows you to do is that allows you, they'll take your credit card details and then you enter your friend's email in and then you say, this is what I'm going to do by this date. And if... You, you know, once that date comes around and your friend gets emailed, if you don't do it and your friend says this person didn't do it, that person will be charged whatever you specified on the credit card. <laughs> and, and that guy that runs the company gets the money. <laughs> wow. What a fantastic idea. What a clever name. So if, if you want to, if you want to follow suit, uh, I highly recommend doing that. I think, thanks for sharing that, brother. And I think uh, it's amazing because, uh, you know, so far you're just that type of guy, man. You're you're a giver. And I just want to just bring that to your attention that and I'm sure you already know that. But I just want to publicly say, like, man, you are you're a true giver, man. And, you know, big, big ups to you. Oh, well, thank you, bro. I think that's what it's all about. You know, yeah. you know what we do at Founder, you know, it kind of comes like I, I heard this really cool analogy from someone I interviewed, the founder of Elance. Uh, the CEO of Elance, and he's now stepped down. But he says that um, he, he described entrepreneurship and, and entrepreneurs as the artists of today. And, you know, you, you have a canvas. We all start with a blank canvas and you can paint and make that art look however you want it to look. And, and when I, and it's like a reflection of yourself. And when I look at the work that we do at Founder, you know, a big part of it is a reflection of myself. So I have a very big sense, I guess, of contribution. And that's what we do at Founder. You know, we equip entrepreneurs and, you know, we, we show you what it takes to build a successful business. We connect you up with, you know, insights, tools, strategies, tactics from, you know, the leading entrepreneurs from around the world. So there is always a big sense of contribution. So yeah, thank you, man, because, uh, you know, that, that's who I am and that, and that is what I'm kind of creating is, is some stuff around giving and give you do. And, uh, I also, I remember it was three takeaways that I wanted to shine on. And the last one was the fact that you kept your day job while you were trying to find or found founder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. You know, a lot of people think that they got to, you know, and some people do it, you know, they start cold Turkey, they just quit their job and they go out there, but to have that security and that know that, you know, you just got to put in that double work on the back end is, you know, burn the candle from both ends, as they say. It, it takes commitment, but it, it paid off for you, obviously. Yeah, look, to be honest, I probably would have gotten there faster and I probably should have left my job sooner. It took me about a year to build it up, um, but I probably should have left sooner. And, you know, a big takeaway there 
is I had mentors guiding me every step of the way. Like, you know, one of one of my mentors, Matthew Michael, it's a super successful entrepreneur. He sold his last business for fifty million here in Australia. And he even like he even told me, he's like, you know, I think it's time for you to leave. And he's like, how much I bet you that after you've left, you will tell me you should have left sooner. And he was so right, you know, like, so just surrounding yourself with people, not only people that have done it before, super, super successful entrepreneurs, but even people that, you know, have a lifestyle business that are doing all right for themselves and they run their own business and they don't have a day job, even people like that and surrounding yourself with people like that and talking and finding out and networking and becoming friends with people like that and helping people like that and bringing those people into your network, it becomes less about hope I can build my business up so I can leave my day job. It's not like that. It becomes, it's a matter of when, you know, you don't, you, your mindset changes. And that's another great quote by Jim Rohn is you're the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. So like, you know, that just hanging out with people that have done it before, whether they're super successful or, you know, they're just kicking some goals and they've just left their business and they're living their own dream, you know, just hanging out with those people, eventually your mindset will start to shift and it won't be a matter of if, it'll be a matter of when, you know what I mean? And that, that's a game changer, man. Like I think that in itself is such a massive game changer because if you're on the other side of the fence listening to this right now, you will think, you know, oh, that's easy for Nathan. This kid got lucky or, you know, he just worked really hard. I don't have time for that. And you know what? You probably don't, but you have to make time and you have to want it so extremely badly that you, you make it work. And that's exactly what I've done. And, and others would might call you a lunatic for how obsessed yeah, you get into it too, right? Yeah, of course. There's going to be people that think I'm a workaholic or, you know, all sorts of things. And, you know, for me, it's just like I'm all about just doing stuff that I love. And if I'm having a whole ton of fun, well, that's that's my journey, you know? And it's a very fulfilling job that I have now. So back, I, I saw the issue of, of March of 2013 with Stock Image. And then yeah. we jump into uh, Richard Branson. I mean... That, that, I'm pretty sure that's when you catapulted. And that, how did you even acquire a man like that? Yeah, so so Richard Branson was issue number eight. And that was a big switching moment for us because once I got uh, Richard Branson on the front cover, that allowed us to build a lot more credibility to pitch other influencers in the space. And then uh, it's kind of been a snowball effect now. Like we can interview pretty much whoever we want now for the most part. Like I'm trying to get in touch with Elon Musk. Haven't had much luck there, but you know, for the most part, most influencers will get back to us at least if they, even if they say no. And the way I did it, and I get asked this question quite often is simply I contacted, you know, you've got to find the gatekeeper. You got to find, you know, the person that says yes or no, and you got to pitch them on the phone and you've got to display a mutually beneficial exchange in value. For me, uh, with Sir Richard Branson, we pitched him four months in. So the magazine wasn't very big, man, but I played on the fact that, uh, you know, his first business venture was a magazine and, you know, he's been on the front cover of every other business magazine, so why can't he be on Founder, you know? Yeah. So I just just did that, man. And, uh, you know, having a magazine too, is it, it has quite a lot of authority. And uh, when I managed to get Richard Branson, that's what I realized too, was people take a magazine pretty seriously as opposed to a blog or even a podcast. You know, for sure, like podcasts are getting taken a lot more seriously now, but two years ago, not so much. Um, you know, you look at guys like uh, Mark Maron or Adam Carolla or John Lee Dumas or James Alcher, all these guys with amazing podcasts, Serial, um, you know, all these, ama This American Life, like these guys, they get interviews with people like, you know, the dude off Breaking Bad or the president, like, uh, yeah. you know, Obama, like just crazy stuff. And, you know, how are they doing it? It's the same thing, you know, just having an audience, having influence or being perceived as an influencer uh, and finding that fair exchange uh, in value, I think is, is really, really important. 
Uh, that's awesome, and I'm glad you shared that. Uh, Nathan, can you can you break down a little bit for us your Instagram strategy? Because I followed you guys when hardly anybody, and then within no time, you guys skyrocketed as well. How did yeah, you, yeah. Uh, how'd you get down to that? Yeah, sure. I'll go really deep for you on that because that's <laughs> another question a lot of people like to hear um, because who wouldn't want more Instagram followers in the sense? I don't know. There's something about Instagram. It's It's really addictive. It's really fun. It's it's a very powerful platform. Well, a lot of opportunities come come from there as well. Yeah, yeah, and you wouldn't think so. Like, um, there's there's two sides of the fence. One side where people are totally oblivious to what's going on, with how powerful Instagram is, and then uh, there's this other side where there's someone like me or you, where it's just like, wow, you can do some amazing things with your business. Um, and even if you're not in a fashion related niche or health related niche and, you know, it's really impressive how, you know, much you get reach on that platform, how much you, you can, you can grow it and reach and, and, and touch people and, and grow your business. So to answer your question, to give some context, I started the working on the founder Instagram account in November last year, and we've taken it from zero to, we just ticked over 300,000 followers a couple of days ago. Yeah. And we're recording this mid August and I've done that through a few ways and Instagram has been a game changer for our business in terms of exposure leads, uh, people to join our email newsletter and our, our community and uh, sales. So it's been, it's been a game changer. So the first things first is we're extremely consistent. Since starting it, I have only uh, missed a, one day of posting. Otherwise, every other day, every single day, I've always posted. And uh, you know, I have a bit of help now, but in the early days, I didn't have any help. So I've always posted every single day, and I always try and post four to eight times a day. The more you post, the faster you grow. Another thing is content. Content, the kind of content that you put out there is has to be uh, very consistent in the sense that you have a theme and it also has to be super engaging and valuable. You have to provide a ton of value and you have to know what your audience wants. You have to know them like so extremely well that, that you touch them, that they, they really resonate with your content, that they will follow you. So when somebody comes to your account, you know, the consistency piece matters because it's like, oh, what, what is this? What is this account all about? You know, subconsciously, you know, a picture can tell a thousand words. So, you know, when somebody first comes to your feed, what are the first three to nine images they see? Um, and it doesn't resonate with them, you know, what does your, and, and how can you link that up with your business? They're, they're the questions you need to ask. And then the next piece of that puzzle is, I guess, uh, getting a lot of accounts to share, share your feed, uh, and, and share, share not so much your feed, but your content. Um, so it's like a partnership strategy. I never thought I was very good with partnerships until a while ago that my friend actually said, Nathan, you know, all you do with Instagram is pretty much partnerships. I find other accounts to share, share our stuff. For the most part, you know, if you just take away those three things, consistent content, valuable content, and try to get other accounts to share your stuff, uh, that's a great place to start. How do, I, how do you How do you break that barrier though? Because everybody who wants to have, you know, this famous account share their stuff or do a partnership like that. How, how do you go about doing that? Yeah. So look, I just started small, man. Like I, you know, I started doing share for shares with accounts that, you know, had, you know, 10,000 followers, stuff like that. And the reason I got in early with the share for share stuff was because I networked and I found somebody that had like a 30,000 account. He introduced me to a network of people. And across that network, I provided a ton of value. Like one of those guys I featured in the magazine. You know, I, I provided a ton of value to that community. And um, I provide a ton of value to that person as well. Like uh, he, he only had it. He only has an Instagram account. Now he's starting to build a real business. And I've been kind of like, you know, helping him and mentoring him and stuff along the way. So there's plenty of ways that uh, – you can help someone even if you don't look at the exchange in followers. So if that person has, you know, at least a hundred thousand followers or it's a looked at as like a famous account, you can always look for other ways that you can provide value and exchange that. So, you know, that's exactly what I did. 
Um, you know, a lot of people think like, and I get this every day. A lot of people ask for me to shout them out and I, I just don't write even write back anymore because it's just really, I think, disrespectful in that sense. Like always look to serve first and ask later. And that core philosophy I have used for our founder in all the elements of our business when it comes to getting magazine interviews, when it comes to asking people to subscribe to the magazine, or when we're asking people to buy any of our training products or even to listen to our podcast. You know, everything we do, we serve first and ask later. Um and, you know, even on our Instagram, you know, you'll see that we post like, you know, at least five or six value content related images before we ask people to click on the link on our bio and download our free, at the moment, free Instagram ebook. You know, just so important that you serve first, ask later, because, you know, right now, like every day, every day I'm emailed and contacted and people want something from me. And I always want to make an effort to help that person. I always want to make an effort to take the time to respond to that person. But it gets to the point where you just get sick and tired of people trying to take things from you. Yeah, totally. And I think it's, it's really disrespectful. So to answer your question, you know, if you're just starting out, you know, a few things you can do, you can, you can form a network of, of like-minded accounts that have similar size following to you. You can just build it up for a while, like, you know, a few weeks and, and, you know, just provide valuable content and people will find you and they will tag in their friends. Um, there's all sorts of other things you can do. Uh, you know, I have to mention that, uh, we did create a free ebook um, that that goes into this stuff quite in depth, and you can you can access that at uh, foundermag.com forward slash free, and it's f o u n d r mag.com forward slash free, and that and that will really help unpack a lot of our core principles. Thanks, thanks for sharing that with the with the Concord Nation. I will definitely have that linked in the show notes, and I think that the key ingredient that you mentioned there was. Always look to serve first and then ask later. And so mm. th there's no more. We don't have to deep get any more than that, right? Yeah, um, I think just, yeah, look for that mutually beneficial exchange in value. And you know what? Even if you don't get it, you've done your good deed for the day. You know, you you provided value to someone else. And sleep well now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like that's all we do at Founder. We just try and provide a ton of value. Like we just like, you know, I try so hard to get – these amazing interviews and these hard to reach entrepreneurs and founders, because not only will that set us apart in the marketplace from a business standpoint, but from a contribution standpoint, that makes us 10 times more valuable. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, so Nathan, I love to go into this avenue here because everybody sees you and they see, uh, you know, all your success and the glory and everybody's asking you now, but as you know, Everyone loves to hear all these success stories, but many times they don't look, you know, from the outside and realize all the challenges and obstacles that you had to overcome. So can you share with us a, a story of failure on the journey, on your journey, and then uh, the lesson that that taught you? Yeah, sure. I'd just like to say a few things, though. Like, you know, you can look at me and you see the end product, and that's that's pretty much part of the problem with this whole entrepreneurship kind of success story, kind of showcasing, promoting entrepreneurship thing. And that's one thing I try and tackle in Founder is I try and showcase the dark side of entrepreneurship. And you know what? Like anyone that's listening to this, I know what it's like to not have any money in your bank account. I know what it's like to have, you know, like 5K or 10K worth of debt on your credit card. Like I know what it's like to – create something and nobody you your nobody listens or hears or watches or consumes anything that you've created or bought anything you've created. I know what it's like to feel so so lost and scared and to doubt yourself so much that you know, are you doing the right thing? And and I know what it's like to to be put down by others and and to for people to think you're stupid because you have an idea or a vision or a dream. So you know, I, I've been there and it's certainly not an easy journey, but it's one of the most fulfilling journeys that I've ever gone through, uh, you know, creating my own business and building something with my own two hands. And, 
you know, in terms of stories, I've got tons, man. Like the most notable one that I talk about all the time is when I got sued for trademark infringement, which we kind of touched on before. Like, you know, I just started Founder. We were four months in. We were maybe making like not much money, 500 or probably about $800 around that, you know, anywhere between 600 to $800 a month. We were not a super successful business. We were breaking even. I was covering my costs. And I was just, you know, doing my thing. And, you know, I got an email in like in the morning when I woke up to go to work and looking at my email and being like, what is this? You know, I, I never thought that I was going to be sued. And it was one of the most traumatic uh, times of my life. I just broke up with my girlfriend, but we ended up getting back together. And my current housemate was just moving out. So I had to find a new housemate. And, you know, there's always tough times. It's never going to be smooth sailing. It's not easy. And with Founder, you know, it's only after about, you know, we've been doing it for two and a half years and even on a very small scale, like I feel I'm only just getting warmed up and, and we're, I feel we're just scratching the surface. But yeah. people are hearing about us. People are coming to me and, you know, wanting to do interviews and stuff like that. But, man, even a year ago, I didn't even do like one interview. Like seriously, a year ago, I would very rarely get pitched for an interview. I'd probably only done like a, like two or three, like, and that, and you know, now I, I get asked all the time and it, and I feel so humbled and blessed, but I, I don't want people to forget that, you know, we all have to start from somewhere and, you know, please go to the website, way, the way back machine and look at the first version of the founder website, please do that <laughs> because it's absolutely embarrassing. It is embarrassing compared to, you know, our website that we have going on now and, and the, how much money I spend on putting that together. And now it's time. And yeah, that website is yeah. beautiful too. Well, thank you. Well, please, I, I encourage anyone that's listening to this to look at the first version of our website with the Wayback Machine. It's this website where you can look at, look, you know, you can go back in time. Totally. Of, of the yeah. internet I'll, I'll, and, uh, I'll explain that in yeah. there, yeah, because they got to they gotta do that now. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, it's not easy and it is really tough and, you know, you know, I've been there. So Everyone. for our entrepreneurs that are coming up there and we want to avoid a lawsuit, potential lawsuit, what's uh, what's the lesson there? Oh, look, I can't really give legal advice, <laughs> but pretty much. That's the carry. You know, okay, no legal advice, yeah, but in yeah, your opinion. Yeah, yeah. Like, just be smart about it. You know, if you're going to start a business, don't start a business that uh, has a similar name to <laughs> something else in your industry. Like it's, it, it's pretty common sense. Like yeah. you know, I was pretty stupid by me, and it was just a hard lesson learned. You know, I always learn the hard way. My mom always says so. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for sharing that, though, Nathan. Um, Nathan. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump into the man of round. But before we do, let's thank our sponsors. This week's session is brought to you by Huckberry.com, my favorite manly membership website where you get to learn about all the manliest gear, but also get a great deal too. Check them out by going through my direct link so they know you're coming from the Conqueror Nation. Go to conquerormanhood.com slash Huckberry. That's H-U-C-K-B-E-R-R-Y. Make sure and stay with us till the end of this session for the special Big A giveaway from Conquering Manhood and Huckberry. Nathan, as an entrepreneur uh, and the, the founder of Founder Magazine, what is your proudest man moment? Oh, I think it was, like I said, just uh, creating something with my own two hands that's extremely valuable to certain people. Okay. You mentioned this twice already, and it was uh, that you have to find what people want. And I think that's the big elusive answer out there. You know, how do you think we nail that down? I think you just have to put things out there. You need to speak to people. You need to find out what their biggest problems, frustrations, and desires are. You need to speak to people um, in, like, you know, looking at looking at problems and looking at, you know, your day and and how you could make your life better by creating a, you know, something to fix that. And then, you know, for the most part, testing it and seeing if it's something that people want to buy. And even even when you speak to people. Ask them if they'd pay you for it right now because one of the best ways to validate a business idea is to get them to pay you before you've even created it because if it's that much of a problem, 
they will pay you up front. And, uh, you know, people pay for up front, up front for all sorts of things that they really want. Um, uh, it's but, insane. Yeah. And, um, but like but you please, s- if you if you want if you want to challenge me, please um, keep going. <laughs> but like you said there, you know, unless you put it out there, you'll never find out, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, you, you you've got to put stuff out there. That's how you find out what people want for the most part. Yeah. Okay. So you said here that uh, you mentioned earlier that you you wanted to give up, and so Nathan, for the entrepreneur out there who's dreaming big but they have poor work ethic. Uh, what would you say was the proper mindset that you embraced that you found to to help you push through? I guess surrounding yourself with like minded people that you know you need, I think I've always thought that uh, you need to find people that have done it before and you need to find people that are on the same level of the journey as you are, and then you need to find people that are about to travel on your journey and you're a little bit ahead of them. And I think that's a, a great combination of of just contribution, giving, learning about yourself, helping others and uh, helping you stay focused. Um, Surround yourself with like-minded people. But another thing is, and unfortunately, this is something that I can't transfer, is that hunger. And I don't know what it takes for someone to develop that hunger, that hustle. Uh, I think it has to be an external factor, as like what Tony Robbins has shared with me uh, over an interview. And you have to have something to either happen to you that, or something that has to change your mindset. And you, I, I don't know what it is, but you just have to keep seeking. If you, if you're an entrepreneur and you want it so badly, you will make it happen. But if you're an entrepreneur and you're comfortable, like you discussed, like we discussed uh, earlier on in the piece, like unfortunately, you, you're not going to make it happen. I can't give that to you. Uh, it's just like you just have to want it bad enough and you just have to surround yourself with like-minded people. You have to hang out with people that have done the things that you want to do because you might actually find that well, if you hang out with them, that you might not enjoy what they do or you might not think it's as cool or, or fun or fulfilling. So, you know, I think it just comes back to just the just the network. And, totally. And that's what yeah. I love about these, uh, you know, uh, shows like this and your, show, and your show as well, is that, you know, for those that can't kick it like you and I, we're going to kick it in Australia. They can't, <laughs> they, they get to uh, come here, though, and sit down with us and have this conversation and get, you know, that type of uh, exposure to ideas and, and that hunger uh, through our exposure, right? So that's yeah, what I love that's about things like this. That's, yeah, 100% spot on, man. Like, even to this day, I listen to so many different podcasts. All right. Uh, Nathan, most influential book and why? Oh, it's got to be um, For Our Work Week by Tim Ferriss, just because that book really, really opened up my mind. It just changed the game for me, man. Uh, same here, man. It's, I, I gifted it like about four or five times for Christmas last year. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. But to the Conquer Nation, man, success doesn't come overnight, but neither does knowledge. So you got to go out there and get it. So get Nathan's influential book on One Like It for free by going to audiobooks.com slash conquer. The best business advice you ever received, Nathan, and who gave you that guidance? Man, that's a really, really tough one because... I'm very fortunate, you know, the people that I get to speak to and the advice I get, you know, every day. Um, probably the best piece of business advice I've received or one of is it's all about testing assumptions. Everything is an assumption, whether it's a marketing experiment, a business idea, you don't actually know until you ship it and put it out into the world. And I think. That core philosophy is something that we we practice quite heavily at Founder because we never want to rest on our laurels and we're always trying to do things differently. And, you know, we just put things out there and see how it goes. And if it doesn't do well, we wrap it up and keep trying and we just keep testing. I forget where I heard it, but uh, I said I heard it once, and I thought it was pretty clever. And it's everybody throws out their first batch of pancakes, so you just got to keep flipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, Nathan, this is the last question in the Man of Brown, but it's one that I ask all my featured conquerors, and that is, what is your definition of a conquering man? Someone that owns this. Sh- Boom! Period! Exclamation point. Yeah. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> I think that's kind of self-explanatory. Like, if you own your, sh- you do work that is fulfilling. You you have an amazing partner, and you're very comfortable with who you are, and you're comfortable in your own shoes. I think that's the best way to describe it. It is. All right, Nathan. So uh, your story, man, has been super inspirational, both to me and to the Concord Nation. And what I love most about it was in today's session that there were so many practicalities that we can that you provided that we can you know go out and do today and soon and 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 in the future. So before we say goodbye, please let us know how we can connect with you. So maybe people can ask you for some more shout outs on Instagram. <laughs> and uh, and then if you got any parting words, brother, hook us up. <laughs> Yeah, look, um, the best place to find us and me, me, Nathan H. Chan at, on Twitter, foundermag.com, F-O-U-N-D-R, mag, or foundermagazine.com. And, you know, parting words is pretty much, you know, if you want it bad enough, if you want to make a change in your life, if you, you know, want to live a fulfilling life, as a man or a woman, uh, I think it just all starts with just planting that seed in your mind and, and just wanting it bad enough because once you have that fire, once you have that hunger, you'll be an unstoppable force. There it is. Conquer Nation, plant the seed. Founder Magazine on iTunes newsstands. Go get that. And also follow Nathan and the Founder Magazine at foundermag.com. Nathan, Thanks for giving us your time, brother. The Conquer Nation salutes you, and to you, I say conquer all. Thank you so much, bro. There you have it, Conquer Nation. Nathan Chan from Founder Magazine for Session 006. What I love about Nathan is multiple things, but I really love the fact that he took action on his dreams, and he worked hard to make them a reality. Today, he's impacting thousands with his work, and his life has changed for the better. Nathan, congratulations to you, my man. I know you listen to this, but... uh. Nathan did this all without any background as an entrepreneur. He did it all while still working a a day job. And he is also a featured conqueror because he took action. Thank you for taking the time to listen. If you're new to the Conquer Manhood podcast, I invite you to the Big 8 giveaway, the manliest giveaway ever conducted. Go to today's uh, show notes over at conqueredmanhood.com slash 006. And under the links and resources section, check out the Big 8 giveaway to find out more. As always, Conquering Nation, everything we talked about today can be found over at conqueredmanhood.com slash 006. Make sure to go there and enter to win. This week's giveaway comes from one of my favorite companies, and that's Huckberry. Huckberry is like your favorite store and your grandpa's favorite store and your favorite magazine all rolled into one place. Their mandate is to bring you the coolest gear and at the best prices ever. So go check them out. And uh, see what I mean. Go to conqueredmanhood.com slash Huckberry so that they know you're coming from uh, the Conquer Manhood podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the Conquer Manhood podcast and never miss a show. Thank you for listening to Conquering Manhood. Now it is time for you to conquer all. So take action. Head to conqueringmanhood.com and grab the four steps to conquering manhood. The ultimate guide for free.